Hey friends, it's Brittany and welcome back to my channel. It has been a minute since I filmed a cooking video and I'm excited to get back into it. It's a new year, we're in the winter time and I'm also like eight and a half months pregnant. So being completely transparent with you guys, I am so exhausted all of the time that the only option nowadays for me for dinner is really like the crock pot. It has just been such a lifesaver. It is making cooking so much easier during this time when I'm in the home stretch of my pregnancy. So I've been leaning on it a lot. So with that today, I'm excited. I'm gonna be sharing three slow cooker meals that are so good. They're so, so good. We love them all. And yeah, I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you're new here, my name is Brittany. On my channel, I primarily do grocery hauls and cooking content. I also like to throw in some other lifestyle content. So if you enjoyed today's video, I would love if you subscribed and join my YouTube video. Make sure you give it a like if you also enjoy it. It really helps me out. With that, let's go ahead and get into our first recipe. So the first recipe that I'm going to be sharing is a crock pot chicken and dumplings recipe. And what I love about this recipe is I've made so many variations of chicken and dumplings in the past. It's one of my favorite like comfort foods, but this uses canned biscuit dough, which is just super convenient. So it's really good when you're looking for kind of like a home cooked comforting meal, but you want to kind of take a shortcut route. So with that, let's go ahead and get into our first recipe. With our first recipe, I actually used two different recipes to inspire my chicken and dumplings. So I'll link both of those below for you to reference. So we're starting by adding onion, garlic, and cream of chicken soup to a greased slow cooker. I'm then adding in 32 ounces of chicken broth or stock and whisking it all together. Next, we're gonna add our spices. So again, the two recipes included different spices. So I kind of just picked and choose what I used. I think I did pepper, salt, um, parsley, onion powder, and then I also added some thyme, but really you can just make it your own. Then next I'm adding my two chicken breasts. These are large chicken breasts and they're already thawed out. And then we're just adding the lid and then this is gonna cook for six hours on low. After it's cooked for six hours on low, you're gonna go ahead and take your chicken breast out and add in a pack of frozen vegetables. While your vegetables are thawing out in the slow cooker, go ahead and shred up your chicken on a separate plate. And then you're gonna go ahead and add that back into the slow cooker. While that's all simmering together, you're gonna stir on your dumplings. So I used biscuit dough from Aldi. You can really use any type of refrigerated canned biscuit dough that you like. You're gonna flatten them out with the palm of your hands on a cutting board, and then you're gonna go ahead and cut them into bite-sized strips. This part is important because it's gonna help prevent your biscuit dough from sticking. And this is probably the most challenging part of the recipe, but don't let it scare you. So in a bowl on the side, I have some flour and you'll see I'm just coating the biscuit bite-sized pieces with flour and then they're gonna go back into the crock pot. The flour is gonna help them keep from sticking together, but it's also gonna help thicken that broth mixture. So I'm adding them back into the slow cooker. And once you've added them back in, you're gonna wanna adjust the temperature of your slow cooker to high. And you're gonna wanna cook the biscuit pieces on high for about an hour. And you'll see I'm kinda just gently pressing them into that broth mixture, fully coating them so that the flour mixes in with the broth and so things aren't totally sticking together which honestly is a little unavoidable with this recipe, but it ends up turning out in the end. So once you've added all those, put the lid back on again for an hour on high, then take your lid off once they've cooked for an hour and you're gonna wanna gently try to separate these. And I slowed down the footage so you can see how I'm doing this. You're almost kind of like cutting into the dough mixture, but don't do it too fast because they're just all gonna kind of fall apart if you do that. And then once you've separated them, go ahead and put the lid back on for another 30 minutes on high. And this is the final product. This was so yummy. In my opinion, this is kind of a hybrid between chicken and dumplings and chicken pot pie, but we love this. Today we're gonna be doing a pot roast. We're gonna do it Italian style. Is this lighting bad? Hold up, let me turn the light on. Better. Okay. So like I said, we're gonna be doing an Italian pot roast. This is a new recipe I'm trying. I've never made an Italian style pot roast before, um, but it's very minimal ingredients. It's dump and go, it's super easy. So I'm really excited to give it a try. Did I mention it's a crock pot recipe? <laughs> 
I need caffeine. Okay, so the only modification I'm making is I'm going to add beef broth. So the original recipe calls for a chuck roast, petite diced tomatoes, a pack of Italian dressing mix, and an onion. I'm going to add beef broth for a couple of reasons. <clears throat> My crock pot cooks super hot. I know I've mentioned that before. So I just want to make sure there's enough liquid in there just to kind of ensure that the meat stays tender and moist and kind of falls apart. Um, but the second reason, it, reason is I also just kind of want there to be like a broth or gravy in the bottom because I'm going to serve it over mashed potatoes. So that's all I have to say about the ingredients. Super easy. I'm going to go ahead and assemble and I'll show you guys how I do that and I'll show you guys how this turns out tonight. But I'm really excited to try this. All right, so first ingredient, Italian dressing mix. Just gonna dump this right on top of the roast. I did spray my um, slow cooker also with some cooking spray. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add my beef broth. <clears throat> I'm going to also add some extra seasonings. I'm going to add some basil leaves to really punch up the Italian flavor. Some oregano. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt and pepper. And then we're gonna add our diced tomatoes. <clears throat> Now the recipe calls for you to cook this on high, but like I said, since my slow cooker cooks at a higher temperature, I'm gonna cook it on low for eight hours. Eight hours later on low and the roast is cooked perfectly. I actually just kind of like poked it. It's literally falling apart, so this is great it smells really good i was thinking about maybe trying to thicken the salsa but honestly since it's falling apart i would have to kind of like pick the meat out and then cook it longer i think we're just going to try it as is tonight and see how it is just with the broth so this is looking super good super excited to try this so i'm just going to kind of tear this up and then we're going to serve it over mashed potatoes so i have some potatoes boiling over here to make those. And then I have this end of a sourdough loaf we need to use up. So I think we're just going to split this in half. Have some bread and call it dinner. I'll let you guys know how it is, but it smells incredible. I also forgot to mention I added carrots. I meant to add them this morning, completely forgot about it. And then I checked on this about midday and I was like, oh no, I forgot the carrots. So I threw those in. Actually, let me see if they're cooked. They are. They're soft, so... Yeah, I added those in. Um, I always pretty much add carrots to a roast when we have them because I don't know about you, but I always buy baby carrots thinking I'm going to snack on them. And sometimes I do, but most times I find myself not using them up. And then I'm like, let me use up these baby carrots somehow. So I made a point to throw those in. I've also like thrown like frozen green beans in before I'm roast. That's really good. Frozen peas. So you can kind of make it your own. Add whatever veggies you want so you're, can get, you're getting some added nutritional value to your meat and potatoes. Friends, this was amazing. It had such great flavors, 10 out of 10. So I know I mentioned I was gonna be sharing three recipes at the beginning of this video, but I actually realized I have a bonus recipe. So you're gonna be getting four. So Derek and I actually ended up getting sick right before the holidays. So I impromptuly made chicken noodle soup with just ingredients that we had on hand in the pantry. I feel like chicken noodle soup is not something I make often, but I usually do have the ingredients on hand for when we want it. So I figured I'd go ahead and share just my version. So I started by adding two um, chicken broth containers, the 32 ounce ones to a crock pot with some diced onions. 
And then I just add a bunch of seasonings. I literally do not measure when I make chicken noodle soup, but you'll see here I'm adding some onion powder. I add some garlic powder. You can really just make this your own. Um, I don't, I've never followed a recipe with chicken noodle soup. I really just kind of wing it. So then I'm also adding some parsley. Sometimes if I have it on hand, I'll add rosemary and thyme. And then of course you're gonna wanna go ahead and add like your basics like salt and pepper. Once you've added all your spices, I would give this a good stir. And then I'm just adding my two thawed out chicken breasts to the broth mixture. And then we're gonna add a bay leaf. Not necessary, but nice if you have it. So then we add our lid and then we're gonna cook this on low for probably six to eight hours. This is one of those recipes you can kind of leave on at your leisure. So once you're about an hour out for serving, you're gonna go ahead and add in your vegetables. So I just used a bag of frozen mixed vegetables. Again, you can use whatever you want. Um, you can just do peas and carrots or all of them. Then before serving, you're gonna wanna make sure you remove that bay leaf. And then we're gonna take our chicken out, shred it, and then add it back in. And then lastly, I'm just adding in boiled noodles. So I use macaroni noodles this day. Typically, I would use egg noodles. But I didn't have any on hand, but this turned out super yummy, always satisfying, and thought I would just share my variation of this classic recipe. Saturday here, and we're going to do an easy dump and go slow cooker recipe today. Derek and I are both getting over being sick, so we are just doing something easy, eating out of our fridge and pantry this weekend, trying to hunker down, not spread our germs. So I have this beef tips, um, would you call it beef tips? Let's call it beef tips and gravy recipe. That's what we're gonna call it. It's gonna go in the slow cooker. This is my first time trying it, but this is a true dump and go recipe. The onion actually is not in the original recipe. I'm gonna add that just cause I have a bag of onions on hand. So the ingredients, a little bit all over the place. So we're gonna see how this is. I'll be interested to try it. The can of Coca-Cola is probably throwing you off. It's throwing me off too, but these are the ingredients. So um, brown gravy mixed packet a packet of French onion soup, a can of cream of mushroom, and then a cup of Coca-Cola. I actually mentioned this in my recent Aldi haul that I was making this. So this was on our meal plan for the week. We're finally getting around to make it and I'm excited to try it. So um, this is all going in the crock pot. I'm gonna cook it on low for seven hours and I'll let you guys know how it is. I think we're gonna serve it over mashed potatoes because I got a bag of potatoes I need to use up. So that's the game plan. Let's get cooking. So I have no idea what happened this day, but I apologize. My camera was so out of focus and this is driving me nuts as I edit, but there's nothing I can do about it now. So to your crock pot, you're gonna add your stew meat and then I added some pepper. Again, I mentioned I'm adding sliced onions. It was not in the original recipe, but I do recommend using them because I thought they added just something extra and re we really enjoyed it this way. Then you're gonna add your seasoning packets. You're adding your French onion soup mix and then your brown gravy mix. Note, I did not add extra salt because those seasoning packets have a ton of salt in them already. And we also added a condensed soup mix, which also has a lot of salt. So this is our cream and mushroom that's going right on top. And then lastly, you're adding that cup of Coca-Cola. You've added that, give it a stir, pop your lid on and cook on low for seven hours. The crock pot literally just went off. This cooked for seven hours. I did add some green peas at about the 45 minute mark of there being time left on the crock pot, just so we have a veggie in there. But this looks super good. I also just put mashed potatoes on. They're right here. Don't mind all of our trash. And that's what we're gonna have. So I might give this a taste test actually before the potatoes are done so I can let you know how this meat turned out. The stew meat's ready. <laughs> Literally, when Derek was asking me what we're having for dinner, I kept calling it stew meat, and I'm like, Earthquake. Stop, you're gonna jack on my camera. I kept saying, we're having stew meat for dinner, and I was like, I need to call it something else because it's it's not just stew meat, because stew meat just sounds really boring. Okay, hold on, we're gonna do a taste test. I do let it cool for a minute, so I don't. hopefully I don't scald my mouth. Mmm. 
But, um, very tender. With the Coke in it, I almost felt like it was going to have, like, a sweet taste, but I don't really get sweet at all. Very, very savory. It's going to be so good over the mashed potatoes. Oh, my goodness. And the gravy, so much flavor. 10 out of 10. Very easy. I would definitely make this again. I think it'd also be really good over rice or um, like egg noodles. Very, very good. Alrighty, so that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed these recipes. I hope you'll give some of them a try. They truly are super, super good and we really enjoyed them. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a like and I can't wait to see you all in the future for my upcoming videos. Thanks again for watching. Bye.